All right, that's great. Thank, thank you, Axel. I appreciate it. Um, I, and I, I'll, I'll introduce myself. That's no problem at all. So, please um, go ahead. Okay, great. So let me know if uh, it's coming across okay, if you can see it. We can, perfectly. All right, great. So hi, everybody. My name is David Breedenberg. I'm president of SBE Vision. I appreciate it. Uh, I'll be presenting today as uh, my co-presenters are both on airplanes uh, right now. So I thank you for being flexible and allowing us this time slot. Um, you know, for, from the very beginning, SBE has been a big proponent of OSLC. Uh, we've invested a lot in OSLC uh, related technologies um, uh, and we're excited to show it to you all today. Um, we do have our own uh, kind of a unique spin on it um, that, that we think um, will help extend the reach of OSLC into tools um, in the digital thread that don't necessarily lend themselves um, to OSLC compatibility. And we're going to get into that with uh, examples um, uh, that I'm going to show you. So if we have time, I have about four or five different sort of uh, demonstration vignettes that we'll go through. Um, in the meantime, let's just um, let's just go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so for those of you who aren't familiar with who SBE is, uh, we're a software technology uh, company. Um, we got our start in this area about uh, five years ago, um, and we are solely dedicated to try to help our customers deliver to um, the needs that they have for digital engineering and digital threat. And, and what's interesting about that is that, so we, we have a very specific business objective and we want to take advantage of technology when and where it makes sense for our customers. Um, so it's, it's a little bit of a different focus rather than being technology first, we're kind of like a solution first um, uh, approach. A lot of what we do here is work with the tool providers to make sure um, that we have access um, to the data that's inside their systems. If those tool providers have tools and those tools are OSLC enabled, that makes our job really simple, right? So that's one of the reasons why we like OSLC. If those tools are not OSLC enabled, then you know, we can reach out to companies like Sodius um, and see if they can solve that problem like they did recently for us with JIRA. Um, if those tools are not OSLC enabled and they're never gonna be OSLC enabled, then um, it's still incumbent on somebody to solve this problem. And that usually where it falls down um, onto our shoulders. So if you're not all that familiar with digital engineering, digital thread, um, the US Department of Defense was kind enough uh, to, to give us this definition. I think Iran uh, also mentioned this in his keynote, uh, keynote uh, speech as well. Um, I think it's a little interesting because I think we've been doing digital engineering for about 40 years, right? I think um, Unigraphics as a 3D CAD system came out in like 1980, 1981, something like that. So what's new, right? What's new is the notion of, of it being integrated. So, so they're asking us to integrate it, but they're not necessarily saying how you go about doing that. Now, in terms, in terms of the why, why would you integrate it? I think we, 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 we've heard from multiple speakers today uh, about you know, why things would be integrated, right? And the, here, here's a partial list of what our customers and what the Department of Defense uh, is after, right? And, and, and what, they, what, what it really focuses on is this ability to enable meaningful collaboration of people through connected data. Now, when, when you hear that, okay, when you hear about how do you collaborate between cross-functional, cross-discipline teams, right? OSLC uh, Im immediately comes to mind, right? So. We've all got a picture like this um, somewhere in our presentations, and we've seen these before. And I know, uh, Aran, you said OSLC is more than linking, and, and it is, but it does actually do a great job at linking, okay? So if, if, a, if, if it's possible, and the use case enables it, right, to relate pieces of information while they're, the data is at rest between these disparate systems, that's always like a great way to go, right? And clearly we're all here at OSLC Fest, so we know that OSLC technology is part of this uh, whole, whole answer, right? It's just not um, really the, the, the only answer. So let's go ahead and, and kind of dig into this, uh, uh, th this uh, uh, scenario that we have right now, which is all the different digital engineering tools that we've got um, and all the different, um, what we call a mixed bag of, of silos going on here. Um, the fact is that when it comes to digital engineering, right, not all of these tools lend themselves to remote linking of data at rest, right? 
some of these tools, they don't even, they don't even have a web server in it, right? So there's no way to have a delegated user interface going on here, right? Um, a lot of these tools um, that you see here and other ones, um, and, 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 and we've seen customers with as many as, you know, three or 400 different engineering tools out there. I think somebody else had a slide up earlier today that showed literally hundreds of different tools, right? Um, but some, a lot of these tools, they predated, um, you know, the, 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 the standards surrounding linked data, right? right? Um, and, and as a result, ultimately, you know, these, these tools cannot function with like remote objects as, as inputs to it, right? So we're left in this situation now where um, some kind of a, of a technology is needed um, to, to sort of like um, solve this air gap uh, between, these, between these different systems, right? Um, and what, 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 we're, what we're staring down today is simply a world where if you've got use cases and engineering tools that support remote linking and that, and that, that remote data can be accessed at rest, right? OSLC is your technology, right? If you have other kinds of scenarios, right? Um, where basically you, you need to create at least temporarily copies of data, right? Uh, if you have, um, uh, you know, other types of uh, uh, challenges going on where you need to be able to actually temporarily move data from one point to another point, People look to synchronization, or I think what Iran was calling data exchange types of technologies, right? And these two worlds, they, they don't historically have tended to mix very well, right? It's kind of like you do one or you do the other, but nobody really uh, does both, okay? Um, and so what SBE is trying to do right now is to trying to synthesize these two worlds where we can solve some of the semantic challenges the configuration management, the change management challenges, and actually you know, deliver a single solution that uses OSLC when it makes sense and uses uh, synchronization when it makes sense. And so that's what SBE has essentially been working on to try to deliver these um, solutions to our customers. Um, so what are some of the, the aspects of this? And we're gonna show you demonstrations, actually a few different demonstrations that I, I think will help uh, get the point across. Okay, so first of all, um, SBE is, in order to provide interoperability capability, right? We use at least three different technologies. We use OSLC technology, we use a technology called link proxying, and we also use a synchronization technology um, that's built on a paradigm that we call publish and subscribe. Now, which of these technologies are actually employed at any given moment in time, right? depends on the end users or the administrators, right? Um, where they get to actually through user interface gestures decide which one of these is gonna work best in the, in the given situation, right? So, um, so you're gonna see some of that in the demonstrations. I think the other thing that's important to know about SBE is that we have a general purpose OSLC3 GC aware consumer and provider pair, right? Okay, and so what this essentially means is that we have a, a running container microservice, right, that has the ability to represent any model on the digital thread as an actual uh, OSLC resource, any model and any link, right? So if we, if we have to um, connect out to a system, right, like MATLAN, okay, like a PLM system, like another tool or a simulation tool, right, that doesn't necessarily you know, have, lend itself to OSLC semantics, right? We have the opportunity to publish from that system into SBE and represent all of those models um, as OSLC resources with OSLC links, okay? Um, so I guess as, as, we, as we, I'm gonna run out of time here, I think if I don't, um, if I don't start uh, jumping over to the, uh, the demonstrations, but I think one of the things that I think is important to understand about SBE is that we've got this publish and subscribe synchronization right, that allows us to publish artifacts to the digital thread, right? And subscribe to other entities published by other systems, okay? And when we do that, we, we've merged the world of digital thread synchronization along with OSLC. The other part where we've tried to synthesize this together 
um, is that um, the SPE is configuration aware, right? So if you, if you saw earlier from Andy Lapping, right, he gave a great demonstration of ELM and its global config capabilities, right? So one of the things that I think is, is really interesting about that is that um, it, when, 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 you, when done correctly, right, every, every OSLC resource can live within a global config context, right? And that's really great when you're a user of Jazz, you're a user of ELM, okay? Um, but what, what, if, what if you're not, right? You still need to be able to link these worlds together. You still need to be able to potentially correlate information from multiple disparate systems. And they have to be configuration aware in and of themselves. So one of the things that SBE has is a local and global configuration management implementation that can either work underneath the one that you're using from IBM or as a standalone global configuration capability if need be. Okay. The last thing um, I'll mention, and you'll see this in the demonstration as well, right, is the fact that SBE uses semantic ontologies um, to extend the different domains of OSLC. So one, th one way we're extending the reach is by being able to reach from SBE and OSLC, right, into the world of non-OSLC compliant um, detailed and design engineering systems, okay? That's one way. The other way we're extending this reach is by having the notion of, a, of global configuration management and a system independent implementation of that, right? Work between all these different tools, whether they're an MBSE tool, a PLM tool, a requirements management tool, whatever. And then the third way is to take the whole notion of an of a, of a, of a OSLC domain and allow it to be extended by the use of semantic ontologies. Okay, so those those are three different ways that we're trying to connect the world of OSLC and um, uh, you know um, synchronization together. And so go, let's go ahead and we're going to take a look at some examples of this. I really did not leave myself much time, although actually I did. I did, Alex. I think I did start about ten minutes late, so maybe I can run over a little bit. Is that okay? All right. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this. All right. We we'll give you five minutes, Dave. Thanks, Ron. <laughs> <I appreciate it. laughs> no, okay. That works. Okay. All right. So one of the things uh, we're going to see. So we're we're in it. We're in the SBE. Oh, let me. Sorry. Pardon me. Um, we're in the SBE user interface right now. And what we're doing is we're walking through all the different ontologies that happen to have been loaded into SBE, okay? Now, there are a bunch of different ways you can get an ontology into SBE. And there are a bunch of different sources in which they can come from, okay? Many of the ones that you see here are just loaded um, from organizations that curate and maintain these from the internet. At the very root of all these ontologies is one called BFO, which stands for Basic Formal Ontology. And, and there are ones underneath that, like the information um, entity ontology that have been curated by an organization called Kubrick. Below that are industry specific ones and below those are customer specific ones. Now, why do we, why do we care about all this ontology stuff? We care um, because the language of the digital thread needs to ultimately be under the control of the customer, but the technology that we use to in, in share data isn't. So what we've got here is if I drill into one of these ontologies, you're gonna find that certain classes, okay? Like this one, requirement directive model entity. I grant you, it doesn't really exactly spill off the tongue very easily, right? But in, in ontology world, this is an information artifact that represents a requirement, okay? And as you can see, a requirement is a kind of directive information content entity. Well. Where does this get interesting? This gets interesting because we know, because we know OSLC here on this call, right? That requirements um, are one of the key domains inside of OSLC. And we can see that here because this class in the ontology is actually mapped to the root of the requirement OSLC domain, right? And we've done the same thing with change and we've done the same thing with um, architectural modeling. And so what this, what this means essentially is when we're passing around OSLC resources, we're including the optional metadata that track the relationships and attributes for all the subtypes of this. And because 
at any one given customer, there might be, you know, 17 different types of requirements going on across all the different systems in the organization. Okay. Um, and so we, th this is one, one of the ways that we try to merge these two worlds. And I just wanted to show you that before we get into the actual demonstration so that you can be thinking in the back of your mind that that ontology is like the Rosetta Stone that, um, that allows us to make sure that object A can be linked with object B. As part of that is about configuration context and global configs that get managed in ELM. But the other part of that is making sure that semantically it even makes sense to link you know, uh, thing A to thing B. So let's just jump in to um, an easy initial example where we're gonna talk about linking um, IBM doors requirements to product structures um, inside, of, uh, inside of Team Center, okay? Now, in order to make that linking possible, we're gonna kind of, I'm gonna kind of take you back to Andy Lapping's video inside of ELM where we're um, editing a global config. And, and if you're not familiar with this capability through your experience with OSLC, you, you should be because it's really one of the great um, features uh, of ELM. Now, once you've defined a global uh, uh, con config, you're really defining an engineering context in which you can work on a particular variant or um, you know, branch of a product. But to do that, you have to relate it to all the other data that's in, 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 in the digital thread. And in this, in this case, that has to include a bomb stru product structure um, that we're getting from Team Center. Now, Team Center, um, it, one of its great things right, is it can hold thousands or hundreds of thousands of product structures, but they don't all have the same engineering context. So what SBE is doing is mapping the PLM context of an engineering bomb, including its revision rule and variant definitions to a particular config. Then when we add that to that config, that enables us to do linking um, back and forth between the two systems. And by the way, it's also gonna enable us to do publish and subscribe which is, I'll say, a more powerful way to ultimately get to linking. So, because we don't view synchronization as a, as a means to an end, right? It's, 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 it, or we don't view it as the end. The, the means to the, it's a means to the end and the end is ultimately established connectivity. So I'm gonna go ahead here and I'm gonna reach out into Team Center uh, land and do this. And one of the things that you're gonna see is there are a bunch of different ways to hunt down an object on the digital thread. What we're going to show you initially right here, right now, is doing um, a search based off of local configuration context. But we can also do that search based off of the origin class. That is the ontology, regardless of the data source. So maybe you don't remember exactly what artifact container the thing is that you want. That's okay, right? Because one of the things that we're going to be able to do is search across all artifact containers based on type based using indices um, that we're maintaining, okay? So now that this thing has been established, um, I'm gonna go ahead and fast click through a bunch of hourglass uh, windows here. Um, I can go ahead and I can click on that object and get taken straight into Team Center. So this is classic OSLC linking, right? I, I go ahead and, 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 and the only thing that we've done a little bit differently here is we've used an enterprise and configuration-based search to locate this guidance navigation control primary subsystem. Now, if I wanna go the other way, let's say I'm a team center user and I wanna link back into doors next, you know, you can do that too, right? So here we, we're in guidance navigation and control. I'm on the digital thread tab because this is the plugin um, that, that, that SBE uses to house all of our delegated UIs. Doesn't matter whether it's Cameo, Rhapsody, um, Sparks, MATLAB, whatever, they're all gonna give you this digital thread um, delegated user interface. And it doesn't matter whether you're doing linking or syncing either, by the way. So I'm, I've decided I'm not gonna use SBE's semantic search. I'm just gonna use straight off OSLC, right? So I can go in here and I can, I can um, decide that I wanna, I can find the artifact container in doors that I'm interested in. And if you're familiar at all with doors next, you'll know what this is, right? That's the delegated picker um, that you get inside of uh, doors uh, next 7.0.2. And I can go ahead and establish the connectivity. So well, the point of this particular exercise is to show a few things. First of all, is to show that if you just want to do OSLC, plain Jane vanilla OSLC, you can do it with SBE. We're not going to get in your way. Okay. The second thing is to show is that 
we can take systems that are not natively OSLC and we can put an OSLC facade on them like we've done here with Team Center and we've done with a dozen other tools, okay? Um, and, and so, so the, the next example that I wanna show you is really something that's a little bit more sophisticated now. Excuse me, so I'm, I'm, I got a raspy voice today. So that was linking, okay? But in this next use case, the customers, um, link, linking isn't gonna kind of do the job as well. And the reason why is because we need a transformative capability that will allow us to represent um, what, what started out in life as a Rhapsody product structure, okay? as a product structure inside a team center. And to do that, that's not straight off linking. This is where publish and subscribe come into play. But just because we're doing some synchronization capability doesn't mean that we have to throw OSLC out the window, right? Because everything in team center is an OSLC resource. Trace links inside of team center that go between two team center objects, those are OSLC resources, right? Okay. And ultimately, at the end of the day, we can publish this Rhapsody model to the digital thread. We can certainly do it link, we can link to Rhapsody the same way we link to doors, but we can also define a subscription here that will essentially use our transformation function and pull that entire Rhapsody model into Team Center as a bill of material uh, 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 product structure. Okay. And this could be a jumping off point for all sorts of detailed design work the customers want to do in and around um, Team Center. <laughs> right. Okay, the next example um, I'd like to show you is where things are going to start getting really funky now. Okay, so we had a little bit of linking, a little bit of pub sub, and now um, in the interest of time, I'm going to blow through this kind of quickly, but we're going to do something that's uh, kind of um, crazy here, which is rather than using um, straight OSLC linking, I'm going to use a combination of OSLC linking and PubSub simultaneously to connect my door's next requirements to my Cameo model. Okay. And again, I'm going to do this um, by searching um, based on, on the ontology, right? So I'm going to go into the requirements domain, right? There's everything. I could even say, well, maybe I, I don't want every kind of a requirement. I just want, um, you know, performance requirements here, right? And maybe I want performance requirements um, from a certain system, or maybe I don't. So these are all the, the, the performance requirements that are available to me in my uh, engineering context. But if I don't wanna go that way, I can also search based off of the global configuration context as well. The point is, is that I tie a lasso around a bunch of requirements and I can bring them into my local environment, right? And you could say, well, why, why would you bother doing this, right? When you could just link one at a time from my Cameo model straight into the requirements. And in fact, you can do that. You could also, you know, create those links one at a time from inside of doors next. But watch what happens if you do a pub sub to get to those links. First of all, what started out in life as OSLC resources has been transformed into SysML objects. What was parent-child relationships in Doors Next are now containment relationships inside of uh, Cameo, right? And we've honored the different types of, of SysML requirement types, plus the customer's own um, specific um, stereotypes, right? All the derived requirement relations have also made the trip. So what this means is that I, as the MBSC tool operator, I don't necessarily have to conform my way of thinking to the particular limitations of any one OSLC domain, like we talked about there or earlier with the AM and RM domains, because I can use a transformation function as part of a pub sub to bring it in. So what that means is that every arrow in this um, particular uh, two by two started out in life as an OSLC link and authoritatively, it's still an OSLC link. If I go ahead and I make a change here, um, that new link is also an OSLC link, right? So just because um, you know you 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 have temporarily synchronized something in here doesn't mean that we've forgotten what the authoritative source of truth is, versus this, which is just a, a subscribed source of truth. Okay, um, <clears throat> and <clears throat> that gets really important when we start doing cross modeling links. 
Um, obviously, you know, uh, derives and, and, and uh, you know, things like that aren't as critical as the realized uh, links. And, and so what, what's happening here is that I, I can correlate now the requirements that had originally come in from doors, right? With my models, I got to fast forward this or we're never going to get through this. I'm realizing this now into a satisfaction table and I can indicate what model elements are satisfying that particular requirement. And this is how I'd like to do this, the, this kind of cross model linking. I wanna do it right here, but I, I don't wanna move the authoritative source of truth of these links from anywhere where they were originally created. And so by, by managing this data correctly, SBE can actually allow you to publish these links out We'll represent them as OSL ceilings, so they're not going to get lost. And frankly, at this point, you could delete all of this data that you've subscribed in this Cameo model. Just go ahead and delete it. Get, just delete the package. Save your model back out to Teamwork Cloud. It's not going to make any difference. The links have already been established. So in a way, pub and sub is just a way to, another way to get to links. Um, and so I'm going to have to, uh, I think Axel, uh, 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 cut this uh, cut this short a little bit, but um, I, I'm, I won't show this example. But we have another crazy mashup example, and I I mentioned this earlier, but another place where I think OSLC needs a little bit of assistance is if if it's not just system A to system B, um, if they, your problem isn't two endpoints and getting them to talk but four or five or six and getting them all talk simultaneously with a, with a, a directed graph of objects, some of which have to be OSLC resources and some of which can't be. Um, there's other examples like that that we can do um, as well. So I guess just to, 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 to summarize, um, I think you can have your cake and eat it too. I don't think choosing between OSLC and synchronization has to be a choice uh, anymore, okay? If you, if you love OSLC and you want to use that as your foundation, that's great. If you need data exchange or synchronization, but you're concerned about losing track of, of, of what was came from where authoritatively, um, I think we could help with that as well. Um, and that, again, that's a function of the ontology. It's a function of the configuration management uh, capability. It's a function of all of the OSLC investment that we made. So with that, I'll just say uh, thank you. If you have any questions.